Welcome to the More Perfect Union, the podcast that offers real debate without the hate. I'm Rebecca Kushmeider. I'm a feminist and writer from Kensington, Maryland, and with me, as always, is Garth. And also, with me, as always, is... <laughs> DJ McGuire, a, an economics instructor, an economic conservative, and someone who has no laptops in Delaware, from Hampton Roads, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> And Greg Matuzak, a common sense liberal, and unlike Charlie Kirk, I have a Twitter account tonight from Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> and uh, now we are all just waiting for a lawsuit from Mike Myers, who is going to come after me for stealing a Wayne's World joke. Um, it's one of those nights, you know. Do you ever just need to throw it back to the early '90s, to you know the, the halcyon days of of political blowjobs, or is that only me? <laughs> That's only you. I I won't touch that one with a with a six foot pole. A six foot pole. Yeah, that's what I keep around the house to right. make sure no okay. one gets a, gets near me. So uh, the stuff happened this week. Oh, the... we forgot to mention that Kevin's not here. Ke- oh, Kevin is not here. We are, Kevin is on a road trip with the lovely Jessica. We hope they're having a wonderful time. Can't wait to see photos and uh, things will be better organized next week when he's back again. Um, uh, we'll have better jokes. The air will be brighter. Things will yes, be cleared up. Yes, birds will sing. Oh, well, stars everything will be better. twinkling in our Instagram filters. It'll just, oh, yeah. just be better oh. all around. Um, so, yes, we, we had a week. Things happened. Um, on Thursday night, was it? We had a tale of two cities. Well, towns. Tale of two towns. <laughs> tale of two town halls. Um, and it, it appeared that we had on ABC, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and on NBC, uh, an old man yelling at us to get off his lawn. Did you guys watch either of the town halls? I actually refused. Um, I was boycotting the NBC one uh, out of principle, fight the power. Fight and the no, power. I'm not a Nielsen family. Um, and the ABC one, I, I've heard it all. I know, I know how that went. Um, but I did catch, I did catch a lot of it on my TiVo. Mm-hmm. I'm the last person in America who has one, so I didn't watch it live, but I did catch most of it. How about you, DJ? Were you watching? No, I let uh, I let Tom Nichols watch Trump's town hall for me. Uh, Tom Nichols, man, like he's going to have to go to a spa for like six months after this election. <laughs> the amount of time he spends watching and live tweeting stuff Trump does, that is not healthy. I know. No, no, it is not. Uh, and uh, I did not get a chance to see the Biden town hall, but it was nothing that was particularly surprising. Uh, and I thought the most important for me, the most important part and a part that drove home was the fact that he stayed for well over half an hour after it was over to keep uh, to keep talking to people and answering their questions. I love that. You know, I love, I love that Joe Biden likes his constituents so much that he wants to continue to hang out with them and, and keep talking to them. I think that shows, you know, the 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 really good side of a public servant that they actually enjoy the public and want to be with us. Or, yeah. or, or, well, okay, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to stop you now. Um, even <laughs> how, how is even that a now? controversial statement? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I, I know. I know. We're going to start this off with like, oh, this was so great. This was so wonderful. But look, I am. I am a common sense liberal, and as much as I'm telling everyone, go vote for Joe Biden. That was not. I mean, it wasn't. F- Fair. I mean, we knew it wasn't going to be fair because Trump doesn't like town halls. It doesn't work for him. It's not his setting. He doesn't like people. He doesn't like questions from actual people. A. B. Um, <laughs> they gave George Stephanopoulos to Biden, who, come on, he worked for the Clintons. Okay. I mean, it was a fabulous night. I'm pretty sure they had tea out. It was a. It was very civilized, and every question... I mean, he was like, okay, are, we, are you ready, Dad? Did you get your glove? All right. Here, I'm going to pitch this ball to you. All right. uh, underhanded, of course. I mean, it was very civil and very nice. Um, but with it was a Samantha... Um, Savannah Guthrie. Guthrie. Savannah, Savannah Guthrie, Guthrie, thank you. And, I mean, first of all, yes, I, I right from the bat, Trump hates women. We know that. I mean, and, and women should hate Trump because he's a terrible human being. 
And they were at it immediately because that's Trump. But one of the audience members was a former writer. Uh, one of the people who asked the question was a writer for Obama. Was it? They, it was yes. the, the town halls were not designed to be just undecided voters. They had some Trump fans. They had some Biden fans. They had some other folks. I mean, you know, the the, the great nodding woman controversy at Trump's town hall yes. turned out that was that was a candidate that was a candidate for office in Florida. But she didn't the, ask a question. No, she didn't ask a question. But you know, the person who talked about it, what what a great Trump smile he had. That was clearly probably somebody who supported him. Actually, no. no. Actually, Afterwards, no. She said she was going to be voting for Biden. Oh, she yeah. did. Okay. Yeah. All right. She there just we go, thinks then. he's pretty, but not going to okay. vote for him. And, the, and, and the, the point is that it, this wasn't is. an undecided <laughs> voters type thing. It wasn't one where you had to go plant somebody. They they want they wanted a broad range, and they found it. I'm also going to take issue with your assertion that Biden was just given a bunch of a bunch of softballs. I don't think that was the case. Now the the tough questions he got were more from the were almost entirely from the left that is true and that means for folks who would criticize Biden from the right you know that they just didn't have they didn't have a voice at Biden's town hall but I think you know Biden handled the questions pretty well he oh, yeah. gave a little he, he fleshed out his his views on the Supreme Court a little more and made it and made it more clear that his view on whether or not the Supreme Court should be expanded will be wholly dependent upon whether and when Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed. I think that helped him a little. But, you know, at, right. what was more important was everybody recognized, OK, Joe Biden is a politician. You're not going to you're going to like some things. You're not going to like some things. You're going to think people were nicer to him than they needed to be. Whereas Donald Trump is a menace to democracy. Those are the two things that were obvious during that town hall during those town halls. Yeah, I mean, people people treat Joe Biden nicely cuz they know he'll respond nicely. People are defensive with Trump because he's a jerk. You know, they're 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 reacting to who he is. Now, what you were saying about Savannah Guthrie going head to head with him. I was actually delighted when I found out she was going to be moderating it. I didn't realize she was going to do the first part as a straight up interview. But, you know, people forget kind of where Savannah Guthrie comes from. She has not always been a morning show smiling person. She was a White House correspondent. She helmed um, an hour or two on MSNBC opposite Chuck Todd. So she knows arrogant fatheads like almost nobody else. And she was a Georgetown law professor. Savannah Guthrie has some serious credentials for interviewing someone like Donald Trump. And she packages it all with, you know, this smile that never falters. So I thought she was terrific. And I thought she really benefited from um, low expectations. You know, people assumed she would be the puffball journalist and she absolutely wasn't. And and for the record, when David Gregory left Meet the Press, I was she was the name that I thought was going to take Meet the Press. Yes, over she would be very Todd. good on Meet the Press. But I think because, she was already doing Today Show at that point, and that probably is a lot more money and a lot fewer fatheads. Well, even though I'm I'm just shocked. It's 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 you know this ridiculous. I can't tell you how disappointed I am in Chuck Todd, but that's another story. Um, but. The issues, I think, with even all that aside, and I do agree with both of you on both your points, uh, Biden did answer the questions better. Um, and when the tough questions did go to Trump, he answered them poorly. The fact is that he's the president and he does not know who QAnon is. No, he I've never knows heard who of this QAnon girl. Is. And that was, of course you know, he and does. That was where I would have liked Samantha. Of course Savannah he does. Guthrie. Samantha, are we all doing this tonight? Yeah, I, 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 I did I it first. I wish he had pushed when he said, I don't know anything about QAnon. Well, why don't you? Why don't you? You're the president. You know, why is it that I, with, with moderately high-speed internet, know all about them? And I watch the news. I know everything about them. There, um, and there, you don't. There are, re there are reasons he did that. There were reasons he only mentioned that they are, quote, against pedophilia. And we will talk more about that probably later. Yeah, no, it's the in same the reason all the QAnon trolls in open fire say, what, aren't you against pedophilia? You, you don't support <laughs> people who are against pedophilia? Ugh, so sick of the trolling. Stop that. Exactly. Um, I was I was disappointed when he said 85 percent of the people who wear masks get coronavirus. Yeah, that's I just mean, made up. 
That's just that's, that's just some fake made news up. there, buddy. Not only is that made up, but it's irresponsible and could get people killed. Yes. That yes. that is that is dangerous. And when the leader of the free world is just you know, spouting off dangerous information, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we have amendments to stop stuff like that. You know, well, legal. I mean, you know. Oh, and elections. We have elections. Elections. We do have elections. We have one. It is happening right now. Maybe at your kitchen table, you could be electing somebody right this moment with your little pen and your ballot, and you're going to put it in a drop box where it's nice and secure, an ironclad lockbox like Al Gore. You could do that tomorrow. And the latest numbers I've seen, and you guys correct me if these have been updated, something like 25 million people have already voted. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, uh, that that's close to what I've. I that's about what I've read. Yeah, yeah they they are estimating almost the, that by election day about a third of all voters will have all votes will have been done before election day at this rate. Yeah, and right now, and I like I don't even know how you do this analysis. This is something that's outside of my area. They are saying that the early vote leans heavily Democratic. So if we just counted the results that were turned in right now, it would probably be a, a safer bet that Joe Biden would win. Um, do you think that's indicative of what things are going to look like when the polls close on November 3rd? Or do you think things are going to tighten up? Are Republicans eager to vote day of? I will let DJ handle this, but I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do my car neck and uh, hold the envelope and just say Florida 2016 and let DJ take over from there. Good yeah, th- we. This is this is a question we always ask when it comes to early voting, and we never know because early voting is still too relatively new to first figure out whether or not this is a sign of a massive Democratic surge, or whether it's just the Democrats banking their votes early. My guess is it's more the latter than the former in this case, but. You know, we're going to have to wait until uh, until all the votes are cast. Uh, I think the Republicans are going to have a are going to have a very big advantage on Election Day itself. Uh, I think the I think it will be the absentee ballots that will decide it one way or the other. And that's why I mean, that's why Trump is trying to, to close down all sort of absentee ballot counting. And it's why states that count their ballots early, their absentee ballots early, like Florida and North Carolina and Arizona and to a lesser extent, Texas, are going to be the real states to watch because we'll know what they're actually thinking well in advance of states like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin or Michigan, which have to do their absentee ballot counting after, later on. There was just a ruling about Michigan that they they can stop counting sooner than they originally wanted to stop counting. Is, 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 was that Michigan they, or was that Pennsylvania? The, I think it was, the Michigan ruling was that they can, they no longer have to wait two weeks for ballots to show up. Right. Yeah. They, they have to be delivered. They have to be delivered on election night itself. So, um, and that's why drop boxes have been so contentious. You see it in Texas. You, there's been a lot of back and forth in Pennsylvania about having drop boxes accessible so that people aren't having to deal with postmarks or the U.S. mail at all. People are taking. It, mm-hmm. it's, I'm, I'm certainly seeing people in my um, my text banking outreach. People keep saying, "Yeah, I filled it out. I'm taking it to the board of elections. I'm taking it to a drop box tomorrow." They're not talking about putting it in the mail. Yeah. And that, or, that's what I did. I, I I took it down to the to the registrar's office right next to City Hall, and, and and we dropped our ballots in there because you know we just bypassed the post office. Yeah, that's what I did too. I took it to a drop box at my local library. The final step, though, is I did the exact same thing. I took it actually down to the board of elections, uh, dropped off my in a drop box, and then several days later, I went online and checked to see yes. if my vote had been received. Yep, um, the tracking is the most important part. The because tracking that's is where, the most important and if, part. And folk, folks, if you are doing this, if you're dropping off a ballot and your state does have online tracking available, please check it and make sure your ballot has been accepted. Because if you can see an electronic notification that it was rejected for some reason, you can call the Board of Elections and cast a new ballot. Because it could just be something as simple as a signature that doesn't match or a hanging chat or something like that. But do track your ballot right. if you have that capability. Right, and... And there are actually there are some states that can there are some states that will let you fix whatever errors you have on your on your initial ballot. There are one, uh, some states that well every state just about will let you 
cast another cast another vote and they'll just cancel the one that had been rejected. There are there are things you can do to address the problem. You just yeah, you just need to make sure that you're informed so you can go and do them. Um and the other thing we're seeing right now is um the the polling. There is there is all kinds of polling out. We are inside of three weeks, close to two weeks before this election. There are state polls. There are national polls. There are Bay polls. There are, I don't know, what other kind of polls? Pinata polls, flag polls, all of it. My six foot uh, corona poll. Six foot that corona I keep... polls, 10 foot that's, polls. You that's name crazy it. crazy talk. There's a poll. And, um, you know, and as Democrats who got burned in 2016, all of us are looking at the polls and, and wanting to like throw holy water on them and get them out of our minds because we feel like the polling was wrong. And now, DJ, you can tell me why I'm wrong about the polling being wrong and why I should trust it now. OK, the the national polling was largely on. It had Clinton leading by about three to four percent. She led by about two percent. That's well within a poll's margin of error. The state polls were largely correct, except for Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. They had serious errors. Most of the others had stuff, again, stuff that's within the margin of error. The key thing is the mistake of from the 2016 polls wasn't what Hillary Clinton's level of support was. The polls mainly got that right. The polls dramatically underestimated what Donald Trump's level of support was. Especially in the in the three state in the three Midwest states that we talked about, most polling has Joe Biden over fifty percent nationally. Most polling in these toss up states have him at or over fifty percent. Some don't. So that doesn't mean that that should give us some confidence, not arrogance or complacency, but some confidence about about twenty twenty. But the thing we have to remember is that even under the most optimistic scenario, which is the, the economist one, they still give Donald Trump about an 8% chance of winning of winning the election. If you have if you are a D&D player and you have rolled a 1 on a D20, you know Donald Trump can win the election. Right, and and, and <laughs> that's that's the thing and, and we worry not just about hidden pockets of support in geographically strategic locations, but we worry about the shenanigans. Greg, you know, what shenanigans are you worried about in Florida, in Pennsylvania, in the, you know, in these states that could tilt things one way or the other? Is Ohio going to shenanigans? Oh, we have. Word? Yeah, yeah, that's it. shenanigan. Oh shenaniganize. Shenaniganize. Shenanigan. Shenaniganize. Shenan- okay, we I'll have... work on that. You, you pontificate. <laughs> Sure. There, there's lots of things that we worry about here. There's a there's one county that is notorious for issues, and they're always the last one um, to send things, and their their numbers don't always add up. And and Quite several, like no, uh, no, it's actually in south southwest Ohio. Um, and oh, really? Some, wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not a huge <laughs> district, but um. But, you know, it's it's one of those things where we have actually had to have in the last election, we had to have um, several people go out there and like, you know, this doesn't work anymore. Um, And, you know, with uh, with election, with the uh, counters and, you know, we have lawyered up. Um, If you see shenanigans, everyone knows, you know, where you see the lawyers. We're also worried about armed people showing up to be. Um, poll watchers, be, uh, watch poll watchers, and not so much in the cities in Cincinnati, but I live on the outskirts, so I live right, right on the outskirts of Hamilton County, and it gets pretty rural, and that's where I'm a little bit more worried. We um we also do a thing as far as polls, um, sign counting. Do you guys sign count out there? Mm-mm. Or if they do, do guys- I don't know about it. Sign counting is yeah, a thing. Yard signs are huge out here. Yeah, yard signs are like if we will determine like how. I mean, that's kind of what we do is in Ohio is like, oh well, this county's going to go for sure because it's got more Trump signs. Oh. Or this county, 
Yeah, I mean, in 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 suburban and inner urban areas, homeowners associations pretty much put the kibosh on anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, in in here, everything's fair game, and uh, I mean, it gets pretty rough um, as far as signs and. Um, you Do will you have see... sign theft going on there? That's a big problem here. Um, a friend of mine had her Biden sign stolen three times. Yeah, I have friends who've yeah, had signs I... stolen multiple times. They they started smearing Vaseline and glitter on the edges of signs to at least make it yeah. unpleasant for the thieves. Yeah, there was a, you know, and, and I, I, I've never stolen a sign in my life. Um, I always tell people that's, that's one of the worst things you could do. I've moved signs that were in public... F- fairways Mm -hmm. which they shouldn't be and i've moved them to places where they could be um and that i think is perfectly acceptable but i've never stolen one in case anyone is is going to come after me but what we're seeing and going back to the polls is usually like in the urban areas and in the even in the suburbs you'll see more democratic and then they there's a hard stop but we're seeing more biden signs out further out and this is the part where they can't because if we if we go into that chunk of trump area and they're not as densely packed out there they need everything out there Mm -hmm. we're seeing more biden signs and even if we see one out of every 20 that's a lot that means votes um right And, and it seems like trump supporters like i have a biden sign there are Trump supporters who will have a Trump shrine in their yard. So yeah, yeah, he, Trump fountain. You know, so the number of Trump signs is not indicative of the number of Trump voters necessarily. You might have five yeah. signs per voter. They're right. into excess. Yeah, yeah, they're into like the crying Trump shrine. The right. Uh... In two weeks, we may very well see some Trumpists putting stained glass window signs for Trump and that kind of Trump iconography. Yeah. I mean, that's oh, no, where this the, is going. Yeah, with no, there's a, there's a Trump guy in my neighborhood. He had like a, a, a giant banner on his roof that was Trump 2016, no more bullshit. You know, and everyone in the neighborhood was stoked because we all have kids. We definitely want to explain about bullshit being written on some dude's roof. That was yeah. thrilling. But he had like well, life-size yeah. cardboard cutouts, my, flags, you name it. My, my mother rest in peace, told me the story about when she was a kid in the 1960 election, someone in their neighborhood put, basically turned, somehow made their roof into a gigantic portrait of Richard Nixon. That's so, commitment. Yeah, so my <laughs> my grandfather, rest in peace, proceeded to get every Kennedy bumper sticker he could and just covered his entire roof with them. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the kind of neighborhood battles in 1960. I'm folks. like that, but that's sort of awesome. I, I want to, I want a neighborhood battle like that. Um, it, it, like if we're gonna have shenanigans, I'd rather have it be a shenanigan of who can make their roof more partisan, not who can, you know, show up with more guns at a polling place. I actually just heard that yeah. Michigan had to pass an emergency measure banning open carry at polling places because of the whole militia trying to kidnap oh, yeah, and murder it, it, the governor yeah. thing that happened there. Oh, and and the president actually kind of encouraging uh, the the arrest and the locker up of the governor. Oh yeah, no, yes. they were and, chanting that at one of his little right. you know rallies this weekend. Right. Yeah, it, I it, mean, it is such a mess that even Trump's boss is complaining, as you can see behind me. <laughs> DJ is showing us his his Putin meme of the week. It's got Putin saying, "I can't poison Whitmer unless you shut up," um, because DJ believes Putin is behind everything, and so far. He hasn't been proven wrong yet. Um, <laughs> He's which not is the wrong. Really dangerous part. <laughs> which, you know. Um... Speaking of Putin, we were the Trump, Trump, former Trump people, Trump, Trump 
uh, also rounds Trump. I don't even know what you call Giuliani I, I and think, Bannon. They are th- attempting yeah. to create a Putin-esque October surprise. And it's like a bad surprise. It's like if you smashed open your pinata and it was filled with like the guts from the pumpkin you carved a week ago instead of candy. Like that's the kind of October surprise they're doing. For- it's really this is this is bad. They're okay. If folks, if you're if you're old enough to remember that scare over the razor blades and the Halloween candy, that's what the Trumpers are feeling as they have sunk their teeth into this October surprise. Yeah. Th- so the, earlier this week, and you may not have heard about this because social media, for the first time in its life, attempted to do a socially responsible thing. The Giuliani and Bannon showed up at the New York Post with a hard drive and said, this is Hunter Biden's hard drive. He dropped it off at a repair shop in Delaware two years ago, and and we've copied everything, and you can print it. And um, nothing about the story holds up. Not not the Delaware repair shop when Hunter Biden lived in Los Angeles, and, and not the repair shop owner copying stuff and calling Rudy Giuliani to come collect a laptop. Like, none of it makes any sense. And so... It's trying to be a content-based October surprise, but what it's really showing off is that the, you know, Putin is is scraping the bottom of the sabotage barrel, and all we've got now is Giuliani, like drunken yeah, Rudy. This 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 is this is proving that for for all of the things that Karl Marx got wrong, the one thing he did get right is that history repeats itself first as tragedy then as farce this is the farce section <laughs> this is the, you know this is the folks trying to come up with something anything that makes joe biden look bad and based on and i i did look at the new york post article and i have looked at all of the various things on it and the only thing that i can get that is a real scandal apparently is that based on the pictures that they included hunter biden is negan folks that's the real problem here. Uh, the rest of it is, you know, it, it, since that drop, that dropped on Wednesday, we have now seen, and this is, you know, this was the opportunity the intelligence community has been waiting for to sort of inflict their revenge. I mentioned this during the Republican National Convention. And by the way, the reason Greg is not talking right now is because he thinks nobody should be talking about this. So he is, he, is, yeah. he is engaging his own civil disobedience by keeping his mouth shut. And... I get that, but I have too many jokes here, Ke- Greg. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, he's been he's been writing jokes all week, right. furiously so, scribbling them on every scrap of paper. You should see him. Ex- exactly. So, you know, we had the intelligence community has been basically waiting ever since Richard Grinnell threw him under the bus at the Republican National Convention. They've been waiting to execute their perfect, well timed leak at the Trump people. And this gave them their opportunity. Less than 48 hours after this, after the New York Post tried this, we found out that um, various intelligence officials think it's bullshit, that the FBI is actually investigating this entire thing as Russian disinformation, that several people in the intelligence community and several Trump-appointed officials, including the current national security advisor, warned Donald Trump that Rudy Giuliani was a vessel for Russian disinformation. This is the response to that was, yeah, that's Rudy. I mean, that's 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 Rudy. He's been he when he was in Ukraine trying to dig up dirt before impeachment. That was when Russian intelligence were contacting him and trying to plant misinformation with him. That's how far back this goes. U.S. Intel knew about it, briefed Trump, and Trump chose not to do anything. Right. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you think Rudy knows that he's like, like he's doing this on purpose, or do you think he's just a chump? I think he's a chump. I think he thinks that he is conducting some crusade on behalf of Donald Trump, and it's it's going to lead him to reelection. And didn't even think to question any of these nice Russians who wanted to take him out for coffee when he was overseas. I'm actually going to be more 
in city I'm, I'm going to be more suspicious of Rudy because Julie his his consulting firm Giuliani Par- Giuliani Partners has had some Moscow clients that were shady so I think this is more I think Moscow is much more Rudy's meal ticket than he would like any of us to know. I mean, di- I mean, Rudy did bury his cousin at one point, so no. I, I yeah. Don't have I mean, do, 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 there's some the, there's some branches of that family too that there, don't fork quite right. There, there, there will, but there will come a time when we, as 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 we get older. How much when, older are we going to get here, dudes? We're all I don't know, but <laughs> there will co- there will come a time where we will reminisce about how. You know, I will talk about how at one point in the 90s, Rudy Giuliani was actually competent and effective mayor of New York City. And my kids will put me in an insane asylum because they'll never believe that actually happened. It's true. People won't remember that he was once America's mayor. They will only remember him as this doddering tool of the Kremlin. And, um, you know, and, and as we get more and more reporting on this story and the substance of the story is obviously crap, but. You know, Rudy and Bannon went to the New York Post because they knew no one else would take the story. Or if they did take the story, they'd do like crazy talk, like fact checking it. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. It's, it's, it's my understanding that they won't let anyone else see the, the uh, hard drive. Right. I mean, they won't the, let the main... hard not. drive, in quotes. The hard drive. They right. won't let of Main Street not. Media um, and some of, the, uh, some of the reporters whose name is on this, this report they didn't actually write the report no and nobody right. want none of the none of the legitimate report or legitimate ish reporters this is the new york post they you know the, it's, right. it's a tabloid they didn't want their names on it people did not want to be part of this they felt like it was crap what right. one of the rep- one of the reporters actually didn't know that her name was on the byline until after it was published yeah and the other right. one had never actually written anything Right. It's I mean, it's it's super, super, super shady. I think Twitter and Facebook did the right thing for the first time I yeah. mean, together. I know I know Twitter has Twitter's on a roll lately between this and banning Charlie Kirk. Um, <laughs> the banning yeah, Charlie Kirk thing. That was like what happened with that. I, I, I only saw it because Matt Gates is really That's, upset. I, but... I, I think Fred, I have Fred some Gates. context on that. At some point, <laughs> Pennsylvania right. noticed that there were. There were tens of thousands of duplicate absentee ballot applications mm. that were sent out. No, it was a lot. Like, it was like three hundred and twenty yeah. thousand yeah. like duplicate right. requests. Du- they yeah, aren't duplicate, duplicate ballots. Re- they're, they're, no. they're people asking for a ballot twice. Duplicate, yeah, duplicate ballot requests, and you know, right the the right wing bullshitosphere decided put out. Oh, Pennsylvania mailed out over three hundred thousand duplicate ballots. Charlie Kirk was among them who spread the lie, and Twitter dropped the hammer on him. Right. So now, yeah, so now Matt Gates is losing his mind because, you know, that's what Matt Gates does. Yeah, and I mean, and the, the thing about Pennsylvania, like, it does sound alarming, 320,000 duplicate something something ballot, but really what happened was as they were going through the ballot requests, they would see that Greg Matuzak, you know, requested one in April and then requested one in Mar- in May, and then they, you know, were like, oh, well, we're just going to send Greg just the one. And then they're going to notice Greg lives in Ohio and not give him one at all because they're being... Yeah, because but I've they still voted. but they still <laughs> sent a ballot to Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Geraldine's Geraldine, man. killing it. Um, you know, which, once again, shows, A, the system works. Correct. The system has all sorts of fail-safes. B, Charlie Kirk's the worst. And C, I love the fact that during one of the rallies this past week, um, Trump called uh, Matt Gates Rick Gates several times. <laughs> multiple he just kept times. yes, multiple times. He kept pointing to him and going, hey, "Rick Gates over there, everyone. Rick Gates, was that, that guy." Was that before yeah, he, or after he got caught dancing on the sidelines? The that Trump was before. Dance actually, clips from the weekend had been pretty stylish. So this is our our mentally competent, super big brain, whatever. And and the fact is that Matt Gates, who gets well, I, the term butt hurt over everything, is is so offended, clutching pearls. He's going to be like, "Oh, you know, I'm totally okay with this. I'm 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 all right. This is um this is he's a good man, and and yeah. and he knows who I am. And Look, come on, I I can understand Matt Gates' reaction because how many times have you had your have you have your have your dad call you by the wrong kid's name? <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, how many times Matt... have my kids called me by their friends' names? Actually, my son That's called true, but... me Ben recently. Matt, Matt's Matt's a weird guy. Matt, Matt's so a weird guy, and you know, and yep. Matt's going to win re-election, and that's sort of depressing in and of itself. But you know, him... he is you know he is remaining loyal to Trump at the eleventh hour here. That is not entirely true of some of the other members of the GOP. We've we've heard a few senators this weekend strategically leaking tapes of what they're telling their donors and supporters. Greg, uh, you heard about the Ben Sass one? Did you hear about that? Yeah, yeah, Ben Sass pretty much threw Trump under the table and he's like, "Look, you know, this this may go sideways quick and where are we going to be after that?" and you know, and you know, talked about a lot of things that we've talked about uh, a post Trump GOP. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm um, the same thing though. Was Ben Sa- Ben Sass was the only senator who voted for nope um, impeachment? Nope, nope, that was Mitt Romney. That was Mitt Romney. Oh, what did Ben Sass vote for? Nothing. Ben 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 Sass voted to preserve to to Ben Sass Ben Sass preserved his ass. Oh, yes. fuck that guy. Yeah, no, but like I said, Ben <laughs> Sass is the the Jeff Flake of Arlen Specters. Oh yeah, screw that guy. <laughs> And even and even worse was John Cornyn in Texas, who told everybody that he opposed Donald Trump in private, and he actually used oh. the he actually used the when you marry a guy and try to change him metaphor for how the GOP is dealing with Donald Trump. Oh, that's if 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 you yeah. if you can see Rebecca's face right now, folks. That's. I see now. I was I was thinking of that great scene in the Birdcage where Robin Williams is coaching the dumb dancer guy. You know, inside you're fussy, 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 Martha Graham, Martha Graham, but on the inside and don't move. Yeah, you know, that's that's John Cornyn, but he was I hated Trump, but on the inside. Right. Yeah, you're going to see. You're going to see if 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 uh, Trump goes down, you're going to see like Senator Rob Portman, our Ohio terrible senator. Um, he's going to say things like, oh, you know, I, I really, we had some really difficult discussions late at night and I, I really told him what was what. And then I folded like a, like a deck of cards. Um, yeah. And meanwhile, yeah, Trump yeah. is going to be like Rob who I never called that yeah, guy. Right. And, 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 who is that and guy? P- if Portman actually does that, he is going to lose the primary in 2022 to one of those screaming yahoos from that oh, yeah. lockdown protest that looked like the walking dead. No, oh, because no, no. he's got too much money. And he's too well known. Yeah, I mean, that, he'll, he'll and actually, know. money is m- money is. Uh, this isn't on the rundown, but since you mentioned money, Greg, I'm going to bring it up right now. Biden is sitting on a cash on hand advantage of what 180 million dollars. Yep, yep. He yep. is he buying could... ad time during NFL games. Do you know what those cost? Those spots, half yeah. a mil. Yep. He, you know, he yeah, is he... spending money. Like he has it, cause he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I would like to take this time for to let the Biden no, team know to call me, cause I will work for you at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> just call me. I will. You know, I'll do whatever you want around the office. You want me to, uh, you know, just get coffee? I'll do that for you. You've got the money now. You can afford me. You can have the real deal. You know, in the office, uh, it doesn't have to be coffee. I'll I'll, I'll do runs. I'll get Starbucks. I'll yeah, do whatever no, you, you can, want. You can go move yard signs into. I'll move yard signs areas. for you. That's, I'll, that's I'll do whatever you, you want. That, you're you're it, doing the work, Greg. You're. It sounds you're right. It sounds like it. I think as 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 much as we joke about this, and you know, as much as Biden has to deal with the fact that no two ads can be in the same station at the same time. One other advantage of this is that Joe Biden will never run out of election lawyers because he can hire the best and he can keep hiring them because he's got the money, 180 the money million dollars cash right, on hand because he has all this money and right. according to according to Rick Wilson over at the Lincoln Project when the Trump when the Trump folks put out their own figures they actually delayed paying all the cost of money stuff so that their numbers could look better than they actually were. Wow. Well, wait, wait. Wait, you... would, the, would the Trump people, would they actually stiff oh. people? And like not oh, no. Yeah, that would be a shocker. Wouldn't oh, it? Wait, yeah. wait, wait. No, no, no. It's not like they would, like, 
It's not like their foundation took money from cancer kids or anything no. like that. No, nothing no, like that. I mean, it's not it's like not Laura like... Lee and Kimberly Guilfoyle are drawing huge salaries from the campaign or anything like no. that. Yeah, that's no. the thing. If if, if you are a cons- if you're a Republican consultant right now and you don't have a family member on the payroll, you're pretty well nigh screwed. <laughs> yeah, and and you know what? If if you are on the Trump payroll right now. I am telling you, I would get everything in cash. I would I would ask for it like right now, say every week, do not pay me in a check, do not pay me in Bitcoin, do not pay me in Donald Bucks, whatever Donald Bucks are. I do not want I do not want like Trump coins. I That's want right. cash. That's right. You you say, God damn it, you're gonna pay me in rubles now. <laughs> Does PayPal accept rubles? <laughs> it does, actually. You, there's a setting for it. PayPal's awesome. PayPal, our new sponsor. Yes. Uh, you know what? I would I would accept PayPal as a sponsor, PayPal, if you're listening. And I was then, thinking about, I was that, thinking we should that, do a commercial every week for someone that's not our sponsor, and then seeing how good that we do it, that we'll get more sponsors that way. You know, I think that's so, a winning strategy, Greg. You know, I, I, dr- I was dress think, for we, the job you want. You know, exactly. advertise for the sponsors you want, but That's do right. it for free. That's right. Yeah. This, exactly. this week's amateur sponsor is... Da, 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 PayPal. Da, 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 da. Kevin, uh, excuse me, uh, DJ, you use PayPal for lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so all of this, this wraps us for the day and brings us to our new favorite feature, the 60-second rant. 67 rants? No, we're only doing 67 rants. rants tonight. Like um, the four, 47 samurais. For, <laughs> we could actually, we could make them a little bit longer since Kevin's not here. We could round out our rant numbers by each of it. Or, or we could stick to 60 seconds. Let's I'm, stick I'm willing to, to sit here with a timer. Um, we'll, we'll but to kick off our ranting this evening, we've got Greg, the, the strong and silent type, who wants to tell us about a Facebook argument that he not only had, but won. Well, you're giving away the ending. All right. Well, okay. take it away, Greg. T- tell us what you got to tell us. Okay. So today I was in the middle of not one, but two Facebook arguments all at the same time, which many of you are thinking that's a pretty low number for you, Greg. And it is actually. So at the same time, I was having two Facebook arguments at once. And one, I decided to go pretty aggro. I was like, look, um, the person was a self-described dis- deplorable. And I said, cool. You're ignorant. You're not worth my time. And I was going pretty hardcore on this person. And I was, you know, giving facts, backing him up. And at the end, he said, "You're this isn't working. And he backed out. Did not feel good about how that ended. The other one, I kind of backed off right in the middle. And I said, hey, I don't think we're going anywhere. I'm really sorry how I've spoken about here, here, and here. However, what's the right thing to do about this? And I left it really open. And I think that's kind of a problem with how we're talking a lot. And if we just, in a lot of these discussions, and I say arguments, but in these discussions, if we just leave it like, what's the right thing? I think we're all going to come to the right decision. Okay, And it's usually going to be the right answer, the same thing. We get bogged down. um, And the moral time is, 99% 99% going to be the Biden answer. And the second one, I won. The guy actually admitted he was wrong. And it was an awesome feeling because I never win Facebook arguments. So you may want to take a tip from me because and then I'll count that as another argument that I won. All right, Greg. You you are yes. you are the Facebook master, the, the well, winner for of one day. all Facebook arguments. Mark um, the day. Although I've got to admit, I got a, I got a troll to delete her account on Twitter recently. She she kept oh. trying to tell me masks don't work, and I kept asking, well, then would you let a brain surgeon operate on you without a mask? And she eventually deleted her account. So I think we know who won that argument, and the answer is the Russian bot farm manager who fired that girl. <laughs> um, so for our next rant of the evening, we've got DJ talking about his besties, the Taliban. You ready to go, DJ? Mm-hmm. Now— A week ago on this podcast, I noted that the Taliban made it clear they wanted Donald Trump to win. We found out why this week. Uh, The Taliban violated the peace agreement they had signed with us and engaged in a major offensive against our troops and our Afghan allies. And we responded 
by earnestly sitting down with them and getting an agreement to reset the peace agreement to start from scratch again. Everything about this, right down to the word reset, is horrible. It is exactly how you don't conduct policy unless you are trying to keep some bad news off the front pages so your boss can keep talking like he's in Never Never Land and everything is wonderful. This is yet another reason why the Taliban want Trump to win and why we shouldn't. All right, and you actually came in well under your 60 seconds there. Which brings me to my rant, and it's a subject we did not cover this week, which is the Amy Comey Barrett hearings. Um, Judge Barrett was asked a lot of questions this week, and most of them she didn't answer. But the ones she did answer were often about her family. She is a mom. She's got a whole bunch of kids. She likes her kids. She drives her kids places. She's on the PTA. She does all the mom things. She even does laundry. Ben Sass asked about it, I think. Um, and that's awesome. And if being a mom, being a parent, driving carpool, doing laundry is a job qualification for Supreme Court, I want to put it on my LinkedIn, too. It's, you don't get to have it both ways, GOP. Either being a parent and having a robust family life is an asset in an employee, or you need to go to hell. Because if it's good for Amy Comey Barrett, it's good for everyone else in America. And bosses in America need to be like, yes, going to your kid's school play that is professional development. Running a carpool that requires a spreadsheet, that is a job skill, and I'm going to give you a raise for knowing how to do stuff like that. You, you, either parenting is a desirable trait, or it's not. You can't have it both ways. All right, and that's my yeah, rant. She, she's sort of like the, uh, help me out here with this, DJ, the uh, Gladys uh, Shafley? Sh- no. Phyllis. 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 Phyllis Schlafly, Schlafly, Phyllis Schlafly, Phyllis Schlafly. Yeah, yeah. she. That. You know, she once gave an interview where she talked about, you know, what advice would you give to, you know, young mothers? Now she's like, oh, when I was a young mother, all I wanted was a washing machine, so I wouldn't have to wash the diapers by hand. I'm like, well, I've got a washing machine, so can I have a career now? Like, all right, shut up, lady. Get with the times. It's... Nobody washes diapers by hand. Sh- and put... she is. She's dead. I. She, she's dead now so <laughs> yeah. when she and you know like i said i think we all agree that she is she's going to be confirmed next week and oh, she yeah. is going to and she is going to be on that court long enough to issue decisions that will infuriate her fans and her former fans and because that's just what justices do they they Either they change over time or the issues around them change over time. I've seen this over and over again. And it's going to happen to her just as it happened to everybody else. No, I hope See, you're I'm right. I, I, with and you, I do agree okay. with you, DJ. I believe the court shapes the justice as much as the justice shapes the court. However, that doesn't make me love this particular justice. I think she is underqualified and underexperienced. Um, but, yeah, no, I know. I do want carpool to be something that I can add to my resume. But with that, thank you all for listening. If you enjoy what we do here, please follow us on Twitter at MPU Podcast and on Instagram at MPU Fan Club. And don't forget to share our link on your Facebook timeline so your friends can discover us as well. We love all your messages. We love your comments. We love you to rate us as if we are superstars of the podcast universe. Um, So please show us some love wherever you find us. And if you'd like to join in our political debate between shows, join us in our Facebook group, Open Fire Politics. We're all there along with the Russian trolls, and we would love to see you there too. And uh, we have one more debate coming up this coming week. I believe it's on the 22nd. Greg, are you going to be watching and are you going to be making debate nachos? I, I will. I've been working on new recipes for debate nachos, um, I'm, I'm I, I kind of want to do a um, a live stream with all you guys at the same time. I'm working on the technology hmm. so that we can all watch it together. I'm actually um, going to be going to um, a book club meeting in a yurt, a socially distanced yurt book club. So no, I'm no, watching, no, no, no. You guys no, go ahead. It's, have it's, a live stream. No, no, it's okay. It's not you. It's me. Oh. I understand. <laughs> 